If there is one thing that we can say for certain about royal life, it is that it is often kind of ridiculous, actually. The late queen woke up almost every single day because the piper of the sovereign would follow her from Buckingham Palace to Windsor Castle all the way to Balmoral. King Charles supposedly shrieked when he first saw Gladrap, and I mean, it wasn't even that long ago. When Prince Andrew used to travel abroad, he supposedly would make his valet bring an oversized ironing board along with him. To be fair, though, he probably is not traveling abroad these days because he's probably worried that he might face some kind of legal paperwork that he does not want to deal with. So I do have some early-in-the-week irony that I want to share with you all. Half of history's most famous self-evictees from the House of Windsor, of course I'm talking about Meghan and Harry, seem to be carrying on this tradition of royal absurdity. On Tuesday, we learned that Meghan is supposed to be one of the honorees at the 2023 Women of Vision Awards. It's sponsored by the Miss Foundation, and it was launched by her friend, neighbor, and living icon Gloria Steinem. There's going to be a glamorous event in New York City on May 16th, meaning that somewhere out there right now, a stylist is putting together racks of designer black tie looks for Meghan to choose from. But where things start to get a little funny is when we get to Meghan's bio. It claims that she is a feminist, champion of human rights and gender equity, and global role model. I'm sorry, what? Now, maybe Meghan can actually claim those first three achievements, according to some people. But anyway, things start to get ridiculous when we get to those last three words. Global role model. I mean, seriously? For whom exactly? Are women wanting to parlay a deep riff with their in-laws into lucrative content? Is that who she's the role model for, I wonder? Or maybe she's a role model for people who have always dreamed of wearing very expensive designer duds to a Harlem school. Or maybe people who aspire to be authors of failed children's books. Could that be it? And don't get it twisted, when Meghan first got to London in late 2017 to join the royal ranks, I personally was very excited. I thought the world was going to finally get an HRH whose values and priorities aligned with every feminist out there. A woman who could use her global platform to affect real change for women. I thought, hooray, Meghan Markle is going to be taking on the patriarchy. And in the approximately 20 months that Meghan spent as a working member of the royal family, that almost kind of happened. She did make some official trips to South Africa and Morocco. And when she was there, she did put a large emphasis on gender equality. But then, of course, came Mexit. And what has happened after is not the stuff of feminist legend at all. And I know what the Sugars are going to say, that Meghan and Harry's exit was a real moral achievement, that Meghan stood up to an ancient institution and she spoke out about a situation that she thought was wrong. I mean, convictions do take courage, that is true. But last time I checked, being a feminist has nothing to do with going on TV to talk about how horrible your husband's family is. Over the past three years, Meghan cold-called a few seemingly unimpressed senators about paid parental leave. She donated a $25 Starbucks gift card to a leading nonprofit working on the cause, and she wrote a letter about the issue to then-House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and then-Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Since 2019, Megan has been the patron of UK charity SmartWorks, but considering that now she lives in California, it's not really clear what this means. The R12 Foundation's recent impact report claimed that they had partnered with the National Women's Law Center and had worked and had provided support to Georgetown University Law Center's initiative on gender justice, and that they were working hand-in-hand -hand with organizations advocating for paid parental leave, including the organization called Moms First. In 2021, Megan did help to rebuild a Texas women's shelter after some horrible storms. And last year, she participated in a conversation with Steinem and journalist Jessica Yellen for Vogue when Roe v. Wade was overturned. And in that little talk on the subject of having the Equal Rights Amendment ratified, Megan said, Well, Gloria, maybe it seems as though you and I will be taking a trip to D.C. together soon. Hmm, interesting though, I haven't heard anything about this trip actually happening. I will try to give credit where credit is due. This is probably more than people like you or I have done. If Megan wanted to, she could probably spend every single day just lazing by the pool and drinking a margarita and reading some book. So I guess we do need to give her credit for trying to stand for something. 
But still, trying isn't really the same as doing, and Megan is hardly a global role model. The sticking point in all of this is the rift between the Megan hyperbole and what is reality. Let's think about the company that Megan is keeping among some of the other women of Vision Autoreys this year. So on this list, we've got Latasha Brown, she co-founded Black Voters Matter. We've got Wanda Irving, who co-founded Dr. Shallon's Maternal Action Project, which focuses on improving Black maternal health. And also Kimberly Inez McGuire, who is the executive director of URGE, Unite for Reproductive and Gender Equity. And then we've got Gloria Steinem herself. She is somebody who has definitely earned legend status. She went undercover and she worked inside one of Hugh Hefner's Playboy clubs. She went on to write one of the most famous journalistic exposés of all time. She co-founded the revolutionary Ms. Magazine, National Women's Political Caucus, Women's Action Alliance, and she also received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is the highest civilian honor in the U.S. When people hear the name Gloria Steinem, they think about global women's liberation movement and the mainstreaming of gender equality. Women all around the world owe her a great deal. She did a lot of good work. Her achievements are very impressive, and they're also very real. But can we say the same for Megan? Her Women of Vision bio also sets out this pretty interesting tidbit. Megan is noted as one of the most powerful and influential women in the world, topping such lists as Time Magazine's Most Influential People, The Financial Times' 25 Most Influential Women, Variety Power of Women, and British Vogue's Vogue 25. Okay, yes, well, she did appear on all of those lists, which supposedly mean that she's so powerful and influential. But if we ignore all of that, then what exactly makes Megan one of the most powerful and influential women in the world? Is she famous? Yes, well, more infamous, but anyway. Is she talked about? Well, yeah, definitely. Do people on social media obsess over her? Well, sure. And is she pretty likely to cause a run on some cool West Coast jewelry brand? Well, sure. In 2016, Megan was, as biographer Tina Brown pointed out, six on the call sheet for a fairly successful cable dramedy, and she was also the creator of a mediocre blog. But what about today? Well, today she is one of the world's biggest celebrities and her every word gets covered by the media. And she has managed to shake a 1,000 plus year old institution. Her journey from Toronto yoga lover who supposedly had occasionally set up a paparazzi photo to somebody who has already earned herself inclusion in the history books is pretty amazing to be fair. But that is hardly the same thing as having real power and influence in places that really matter, like Washington or Silicon Valley or Wall Street or Hollywood. As far as we know, Megan never attended DeVos or the annual Sun Valley gathering that's considered summer camp for billionaires, and I don't think anybody has ever asked her to give a speech to the UN. The 40-something-year-old has also not managed to carve out a niche for herself at the head of any large-scale women's movements, and she's not seen as a leader on any particular front. In 2015, Megan became a UN women's advocate for women's political participation and leadership. In spite of the fact that she left official working royal duties more than three years ago, so therefore making her a free agent to connect herself to whatever agency or charity she wants to, her connection to the UN has not been renewed for some reason. Now, I guess Megan has done some things to try and help people, especially women. Can we say that she has done more than your average Montecito housewife? Well, all right, sure. But it's not like the UN Secretary General has her on speed dial, and people like Michelle Obama and Hillary Clinton are not calling her up either. Now, Megan does deserve some kudos for the work that she's done, the work that she's actually done, but it is quite the stretch to suggest that Megan is somebody who is shaping tomorrow or really leading the charge. And here's another interesting tidbit. Her grandmother-in-law was one of the longest-serving female heads of state ever, and she navigated the turbulent social and cultural waters of the 20th century. It was a job that she inherited, making her the original Nepo baby, but what the late queen did with the throne is an amazing thing. She showed how to wield soft power and how to build respect. From the very beginning, her late majesty was often the only woman in the room, a 20-something-year-old woman surrounded by so many stuffy older men with strong opinions. By all accounts, she certainly learned how to hold her own. 
I think my favorite example is this one. You've probably heard this story, but I'm going to share it again. Her late majesty decided that she was going to be the one to take the wheel and drive Saudi Crown Prince Abdullah around, reportedly at amazing speeds, and she drove him all around her Balmoral estate when actually it was illegal for women to drive in the Crown Prince's homeland. Now that, if you ask me, is a perfect example of a global role model.